Okay, in this demonstration, I'm going to attempt to show you how to package um, Zscaler app for distribution via Microsoft Intune uh, on an OS X uh, Mac OS device. Um, so a couple of things we, we're going to do, we, we, we've unzipped um, the Zscaler app distribution file. Um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a scripts directory um, that's going to be run after the install um, package. And what that package is going to do is it's going to run the installer with a couple of app with a couple of arguments. Um, tell it to run in unattended mode. We're going to pass the user domain, the cloud, and we're going to tell it it's unattended. So hopefully that will stop all pop-ups coming up, and it'll do a silent install. Um, we need to set the permissions on that script, um, and then we're going to use Package Maker um, to package all of that up. Um, and it's very important that we delete the application. And then we'll use the Intune app wrapper to wrap the file, upload it to Intune. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll um, install it manually on the machine. OK, so first off, um, in my, uh, I've got a, a directory here called app package builds. Um, I've got the Zscaler app here. Um, and in my uh, downloads scripts directory, I've got a post install script. Um, let's just uh, check the permissions on that. And if we cat that file, you'll see that it actually runs. It's a, sh it's a shell script, it's got execute permissions on it, and it's just gonna open that application. Um, it'll open it um, as root, because it's gonna be installed as root. Um, unfortunately, the one thing that does seem to happen is the user still gets prompted for permission. So it's probably something we're going to need to, to look at along the line on the, on how to do that. Um, but those are those, that's the script. Um, so what we're going to do, uh, let's come back uh, here. Um, let's open up Package Maker. Now, Package Maker is a tool that um, came with an earlier version of OS X um, back in 2012. Um, it's still valid. Um, if you could actually build a package with, with Zscaler and make distribution a bit easier, um, but uh, that's a, a developer thing. So here we go. So our organization, com.zscaler, we don't care about the OSX version particularly. Um, so let's come in here. The first thing we want to do um, is select the certificate. Um, and the certificate we want to sign with uh, is a developer ID installer that you've got from... Um, 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 from Apple as part of the developer um, enrollment. So we're going to choose that certificate um, and that's going to be used to sign um, the package once we've done it. Um, the title of this package is Zscaler Installer. Um, user sees the only ins easy install only. We don't want the user to be able to select the volume or anything like that. Um, I've got the selector and we're just going to call it the Zscaler Installer. Um, actions, nothing really, anything else we need to do on here. Now what we're going to do um, is we're going to come to the desktop installer directory and we're just going to drag and drop that file over there. Um, so here's the file inside the um, installer. We're going to untick allow relocation. The contents, now if you see here, the owner and everything is my permission. So I want to apply the recommended permissions, which really goes in as uh, root and admin um, configuration is the initial file destination we want it to uh, go into applications we don't want the user to be able to select a new custom location and the identifier is com.zscaler.zscaler installer we don't want anything else after that um, in far as far as Intune is concerned Intune needs to see a different version every time you upload it it appears um, very clunky in tune for for app for OS X. So I'm currently up to version 1.9 in my in my version. Um, this has no relevance to the actual um, uh, Zscaler app version. This is the package version as far as um, as Intune is consumed uh, concerned. We don't want to restart. Um, we do require uh, admin authentication, but it's going to run as root anyway. Um, and I need to select the scripts directory. So my scripts directory um, 
is actually under my uh, downloads directory and it's this script here. Um, so um, and see it automatically detects that post install script is there and we can go ahead and we can build that file. Um, I want to send that to um, where's my desktop um, and pack that package there. And it's gone ahead and built that. Um, it's asking access to the keychain um, to, to be able to uh, digitally sign it, which is good. So I know it's digitally signed that file. That's all great. So uh, there's my, uh, my, my installer package. I could go ahead and run this now um, just to um, double check. But the first thing I want to do is I want to um, uh, remove that Zscaler OS X installer app. Um, um, because I, I, it, it seems as if it, um, that file still gets referenced later on, even after we've built it. Um, and in factual fact, um, Intune installer, if it sees the app already on the machine in any directory, then it will assume it's already installed and will not reinstall it. So you've got to delete it off the machine um, to ensure that it's properly installed into the, the applications directory. So if I open up that Zscaler installer package now, um, that should go ahead and run. And let's go, let's just check that this actually runs. It's asking me for authentication um, as, a, as an admin. This is the post install script running. Um, and that should go ahead and uh, install Zscaler app silently. You can see the, uh, the logos popped up here. It's done all the transparent single sign on. Let's click close. You know, the package is installed. Um, and once all of that is done, we'll pause for a second. You can see it's properly run and popped in and connected and everything like that. Um, I could have selected um, things like um, strict enforcement mode and all of that kind of stuff, um, but, uh, but I'm not going to do that for this one. Um, obviously, at this point, it's connecting all of the um, policies. It says I'm connected. So, so we know that the package installed. So let's go ahead and, and sign out of this. Here, we're going to log off. Um, we're going to exit um, Zscaler security here. And what I want to do um, at this point um, is I want to come into the applications folder. First thing I want to do is un uninstall it. Let that uninstall, there we go, and then I'm going to delete the installer again. Okay, so that's all That's all deleted. We know that that package runs properly. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, run the um, Intune app util. Um, we give it a couple of, it asks you, you can um, see the, the flags we need to give it. So my input file, my dot, my minus C, dot C scalar installer, dot package um, and my output directory is dot and if all things are, are equal um, it's uh, it's it's um, properly signed um, that package um, I'm not sure why for example it's not install uh, removed that right there we go um, and so we can do uh, Intune app util uh, minus r zscaler installer package and it'll tell us everything we need to know. Um, some errors that I've seen um, in, in this process, if you see any volume info in here, if that is a slash um, or, or you know, it's a carriage return in there, uh, there's something wrong with the build. And whilst it'll correctly package it and add this metadata at the header, um, it actually then means that it won't distribute the package. So it's important that you check um, that, that volume info is, is blank um, and it's pulling that from a number of different things. One, one thing that I did see is if I had a mounted drive, a USB stick in my machine, um, that produced errors. So make sure you don't have your USB stick installed or, or anything like that. Okay, so package is built. I'm now gonna come across um, to, to Microsoft Intune. Um, so I come into Intune, client apps, click on my apps here. Um, I'm gonna add a new app and it's a line of business app. 
select the file, uh, and it's my package here. And you can see it's got that version 1.9 and it's extracted, and that's important to make sure that it properly distributes the file. Um, so that's done that. I need to give it some information. It's the Zscaler app. It's published by Zscaler. Minimum version, you know, 1.7 as far as this is concerned. We want to ignore the app version because once Zscaler app is installed, it's going to automatically upgrade itself as well. So we don't need um, Intune to be checking, otherwise it'll constantly uninstall and reinstall and do all of that kind of stuff. I want to put it in a in a in a categories computer management, and I want it to display in the app portal because I want users in my case to to, to install it themselves. Um, so let's click OK on that, and we'll click Add, um, and there we go. So it creates the package. Um, what's actually going to happen here is if we monitor the monitor these activities, you'll see it um, decides it wants to start uploading. Takes a little bit to upload. You can, of course, see all of the different versions that I've been uh, trying over the last uh, day or so to, to upload uh, and try and get this properly working. And you need to wait for it to complete. 23%. Um, also, one thing that I noticed with Microsoft, it does seem that some things are a bit slow. I, I swear to God, in the background, they've got some kind of cron jobs that are replicating stuff rather than it doing things in real time. Um, so we're going to refresh this. Once it pops up here, what I can do is I can come in here. I can see everything's correct. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to assign this. And what I'm going to do, rather than assign it required, because I want to demonstrate this, I'm going to say it's available for all devices, and I'm going to make it available to all users um, rather than by group. And that means that everybody will see it in their app portal. So I'm going to click OK on that, click OK on that, and click Save. It's assigned to all users. I can come in here and click Refresh, and it'll say it's assigned here. Now at this point, it's um, 1708. Uh, I'm going to need to pause for a bit and uh, and see what happens and wait for it to appear. Um, so a couple of different ways to do that. I'm going to portal.manage.microsoft.com um, and it'll list all the apps. If I refresh that, uh, currently no apps to display. Um, I can also launch the the company portal. Company portal. I click sign in. couple of different uh, devices in here. No apps are currently here. Um, when you actually um, enroll with, um, with Intune with a Mac, um, same as any MDM solution, you'll see a profile over here. The profile tells me that I've got all of these settings in here. It means it can remote wipe and, and do all of these things on my machine. Um, so making sure that the profile is in here correctly means that um, the device will say, yep, yeah, you're currently managed and all of those kind of things. So standard MDM things to look for. Um, and we're just going to need to pause here for a little bit. Um, and as I said, I think it's really just Microsoft's kind of cron jobs in the background um, running to, to replicate files around and synchronize and, and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so I'll come back here randomly and I'll click refresh probably going to take five or ten minutes to come up. Um, so whilst that's going on, what I'll do is I'll come into this tail. Um, and, and I have a tail running on um, slash var slash log slash um, slash var slash log slash install dot log. And that's going to tell me when the file actually gets installed. And it's well worth keeping an eye on this um, as the uh, the install happens, um, or at least when you're, se you're setting this up to make sure that the files are properly installing and everything. You can see here from my previous um, uh, iteration before the recording that it properly installed, so all good there. Um, okay, so we can see now that the, um, the app is available here in my company portal, even though it's not actually available um, in the apps on online. You can show see that there's a there's a very big difference sometimes between what you see um, 
in Intune web interface versus here and, and you know if you you're troubleshooting this you know, you can sometimes um, you know think things aren't happening whereas really it's just Microsoft's being slow on their application so you can see the time now 19, uh, 1720 so it's nearly t well, it's over 10 minutes since um, since we started this so um, I can look at this um, uh, installer here um, you can see it's ready for install um, I've got my tail going on here we'll, we'll jump up the time um, and let's go ahead and click install and so what that's going to do is it's going to download the file. Um, it's actually going to run that installer. We should see that um, kick off here. Um, let's give it a second to see what goes on. You know, it seems to think that it's installed the file. Um, so, Okay, and there we go. So it's it's collect, correctly downloaded and installed it. Now what the error was um, that um, I hadn't properly deleted that file from from that directory, the install builds directory, and it and it seems that um, uh, Intune is is looking for that file. It sees it already there in the direct already there in the directory. And therefore doesn't try to install it and that's why that script then didn't run so it's really important that um, you know I, I would tend to create all of my builds on one machine and then test those builds installation on a totally separate machine so you don't get the, this kind of conflict of it saying all oh, that file already exists um, you, know, you can see that you um, by turning that install log um, we saw that the download happened it then tried to you know, run that package, which it did correctly. It seems to think there was an error, um, but actually it did run that um, that post install script um, correctly from inside the package, um, which then um, correctly um, logged me in. The only challenge was that I, I got prompted for a, for a, for an admin credential on the machine. Obviously, that's not ideal, um, and so we need to think about. Um, a mechanism for, for building that package without the need to, to prompt the user or to get it to properly run as root. Um, I have tried, um, you know, this uh, that script um, and actually, you know, running it with sudo or whatever, but that doesn't seem to solve the problem. So need to look more at that. Anyway, I hope this was uh, useful.